Here we're going to be looking at a direct financing lease and we're going to be having to set up a lease amortization schedule here and we're also going to have to record these this lease here on the balance sheet for the lessee and the lessor. So our example is going to be for a capital lease here where there's a five-year lease, six-year life of the asset, nine and a half percent implied interest rate and then the assets cost here is eighty-eight thousand dollars and the fair value of the asset here is eighty-eight thousand dollars and the present value of the minimum lease payments are, we're going to calculate be $88,000. But the key here is there's no difference between the fair value of $88,000 here and the cost of $88,000. So it's not a sales type lease here. So the next thing we have to go down here is look at our lease capital lease lease capitalization criteria here. So we have uh, three different types of leases here. We either have an operating lease, a direct financing lease, or a sales type lease here. And we're going to be looking at the direct financing lease here. So for le lease capitalization criteria for the lessor, if one or more of the criteria is met here, so we have a lease transfers the ownership of the property to the lessee at the end of the lease, and number two here, the lease contains a bargain purchase option or a guaranteed residual value here, or the lease term is greater than 75% in the economic life. In this case, it's got a five-year life, uh, a six-year six economic life here, five-year lease a life uh, for the lease here. So it's greater, 83% is greater than 75%. And then the present value of the minimum lease play payments, excluding executory costs here, is greater than 90% of the fair value. So we got 88,000 here, present value divided by 88,000 fair value. So 100% is greater than 90%. Now we also have this additional criteria for direct financing lease or a sales type lease here. And number one, its collectability of the payments are reasonably predictable and number two uh, no uncertainties about future costs to be incurred so we have no further costs here so this is our lease criteria here for capitalizing this lease so either you gotta you gotta satisfy one of the four above here one or more of the four above and then also this additional criteria here for our direct financing lease. So let's go up here and look at our amortization schedule. So we are going to have our executory costs here, maintenance costs and that, and then we have financing uh, cost here, that's interest expense or revenue here for this lease, and then we have a reduction of the lease liability of the principal here. So. Uh, Next, we have to look at our minimum lease payments here. In this case, you've got this payment amount here of $22,250, and you have this executory cost here of $2,000. So our minimum lease payment here is going to be $20,250, and that's simply the fact that you have to subtract out this uh, maintenance cost or these executory costs here from the lease payment. In this case, it was $22,250 less $2,000 gives us $20,250 here. And for our example, here the payment is going to be at the beginning of the year here and then we have this residual value here and we'll look at that first it has a interest component and a principal component so you have to discount it back here one year because it's received at the end of the year um, and the payments for this lease here are made at the beginning of the year. So we had 9.5% discounted that $4,500 back for one year, and it has a principal component of $4,109. Subtract that here from the payment amount of $4,500, and you get the interest expense of $391. But the point I want to make here is this uh, residual value here and what is included in this minimum lease payment. And for a direct, direct financing lease, the minimum lease, pay, lease payments include one, the rental payments excluding any executory costs here, and number two, a bargain purchase option if any, and number three, a guaranteed residual value if any, and four, a penalty of failure for the, the renewal of the lease if any. So all of these can be should be included here in this minimum lease payment. So let's go back up here and look at how we calculate our, our capitalized this leased asset here. And the present value, that's going to be the present value of the minimum lease payments here is going to be $88,000 here. So we calculate that here by discounting the present value of those minimum lease payments of $20,250 back five years at 9.5% interest. And they come up, we come up with $85,140 here. And then the present value of that residual, that 
residual value. That has to be discounted back too, again, for five years, the $4,500 amount. And discounting that back, it has a present value here of $2,858. So you add those together here, and that gives the capitalized uh, leased asset amount here. Now, the point I want to make here is that uh, this residual value here, that has to be included. The residual value has to be included regardless here if it's guaranteed or if it's unguaranteed for a direct financing lease. So if you got any residual value, you have to include it here. So for our amortization schedule here, uh, we have this interest component here. That's the financing cost or for interest expense or revenue here. And we have the principal component for each year here. So what we do is we just start out here with our minimum lease payment you subtract that here, here from your balance amount here and you get your new balance here for the beginning of the next year for um, that is what we're going to base our interest rate or our interest expense on so you take in this case 67 7750 times our nine and a half percent interest rate here and you get interest here for year two at $6,436. Now, uh, you have this interest component and this principal component each year here. So what you simply do is you take your the interest component plus the principal component has to equal that minimum lease payment here, in this case uh, of $20,250. So we would take this interest here and in this case and determine our principal amount just by subtracting our interest from this uh, minimum lease payment here of 20250 gives our principal amount here. So we would just repeat this amortization uh, if using this effective interest rate method for each of the next years here. So uh, one last thing we have to look at here, and it's this lease depreciation. That is where, the, in this case, the lessee is going to be uh, responsible for the depreciation here when you're using a direct financing lease. And just a note here, with a bargain purchase option, the depreciable life is the asset's economic life. In this case, the economic life was six years. Otherwise, the depreciable life is the lease term of, in this case, five years. So all we did is we, we've taken the $88,000 um, capitalized lease amount and subtract out that residual amount here divided by five years and we're going to get $16,700 for the depreciation per year. Now let's look at recording this direct financing lease on the balance sheet here by the lesser company or that's the company leasing the asset that a company using the asset and what we're going to do is we're going to work off this amortization schedule that we developed. So first going down to our cash account here that was for that $22,250 payment here and that included those executory expenses or those maintenance expenses and I'm just showing it here as executory costs here and I've just showed it that it would they would be canceled out. That was that $2,000 cost that was incurred here each year here. So I just showed that was uh, canceled out here and it's included in this cash payment. Now the next thing we have to do is we have to look at a lease receivable. Now this is the key here when we're doing a direct financing lease. So for a direct financing lease the lessor records a lease receivable instead of a leased asset. So let's go down here and look at this lease receivable. That would be debited here for the capitalized asset or the minimum um, present value of the minimum lease payments here for $88,000 and then we'd go down here and we have a leased our capital equipment account here we would credit that or reduce that here for $88,000 or move it up here into this lease receivable here and then it would be credited each year here for the uh, reduction in that lease liability and then we have this interest receivable that's that financing interest that would be debited here for that amount each year here and then it would be credited out here and that's because we have the interest is accrued at the end of the year and received at the beginning of the next year with the lease payment here now let's look at the case here where we say we didn't have this residual value of $4,500 here but the lessee actually had an option here or he buys this asset upon the expiration of the lease here and he pays $5,000 for the for the asset here. So we would debit our cash account here for $5,000 and then we'd recognize a gain on sale here for $5,000. And then going over to our income statement here, this is where we would recognize that interest revenue or that financing interest on the lease and we'd credit that here for that amount each year here. But the point we want to make here, the lessor does not record any depreciation here. So they wouldn't recognize any depreciation uh, for this direct financing lease. 
Okay, now let's look at recording this direct financing lease on the balance sheet here by the lessee company or the company that's using this leased asset here. So we're going to work off this amortization schedule again that we developed. So first we look at our capital equipment account here for this leased asset here. We debit that for $88,000. That was the capitalized amount here, the present value of the minimum lease payments. And then we'd recognize depreciation or credit our accumulated depreciation for the depreciation expense each year here. And then moving over to our cash account here, that would be for that payment that we have here of $22,250 per year, which includes those executory expenses here. And then we have this interest payable, that's that financing interest here that we have up here. And that we'd credit for that amount each year, and then we debit it out here. And that's where we have the interest is accrued at the end of the year and paid out at the beginning of the next year with the lease payment here. And then we have this lease liability. We would have credited that here for $88,000. Again, the capitalized amount here or the present value of the minimum lease payments here. And then we'd reduce that liability each year here by that uh, reduction in lease liability that we recognize each year here. And then moving over to our income statement here, we have this interest expense here that we'd recognize for this financing interest here. We debit that for that amount each year. And then the depreciation expense here for that capital equipment, we debit that here for that depreciation expense that we recognize each year.